my uh, real dream was to become a professional tennis player. And when I was young, I mean, I was just like watching uh, Boom Boom and Ivan Lendl and all these major guys playing tennis. And my dream was to one day uh, smash the ball. But in fact, he ended up being smashed the hair. And uh, so anyway, so yes, I, I followed the school. I was not very good as an apprentice in the hair shops. And it's purely by luck that by a sunny day, I've been invited to be a part of a shooting it was happening on the beach. When I had the opportunity to, to work for Vogue Paris uh, and to be that young on the top of it, I realized that I was really not complete to face so much demands in creativity, technically, cutting hair, styling, using tools. I was really away from that. And uh, my only solution turned into working day and night on plastic heads, putting um, pictures of a magazine on the wall of my room, and basically three to four times a week, I was challenging myself. The problem with hair is hair is fluid. It's a living texture. It's the only part of your body, out of your body, who's moving when you walk. There is many ways to approach hair. You can get them listen to you, or they can turn to be your enemy and never listen to you. And when they do not listen to you, you can recognize on some hairstyles that people get a lot of products to get them doing what they want. But first of all, when, some, when, when a model, a celebrity or a, stars, uh, a pop star turn up on the studio, first of all, I always put my hands in the hair to feel what they're telling me. If the softness, hard, rebellion, friend, I really test the hair like, 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 so, like, like a real person. Whatever you do, in my opinion, the perfection, the ultimate, and the, and the peak of the perfection, the top, the summit, it's when the perfection of the technique and the perfection of the emotion mix together. And when you are capable to work the hair in a certain way that is not you don't feel the hair has been worked. The thing is like to give back the hair a certain natural, a certain reality. But to be able to do that and, without the, and, and not having the hair falling 10 minutes after, and to get the, the, the wall day with the same texture not moving, it's, it's, a, it's a hell of a technique to, uh, to put together. And in my opinion, the, the best hairstylists in the world are the one who use the technique to create an emotion and not using the technique to impress an audience. The past five or 10 years, we start to discover that some stylists out of the blue, they've been touched by the holy um, uh, icon of the styling. Suddenly they became our director, creative director on the shooting. They know more than anybody. Oh, fantastic, great, yeah, I'm sure. And then suddenly you see makeup artist, very famous, who became our director on the shooting, which is not even a job about them but they have a strong opinion, why not? And you, lately you discover hairstylists who are just sitting behind the monitor, they're not even doing the hair, they're not even enjoying doing it. And then you discover photographers, quite famous or not, who suddenly out of the blue, they politically, they listen this one or this one, because it's politics. If I do not listen to you, next time you won't book me. So, what, it's, what I want to say by that, it's, okay, we create glam, 
uh, who makes the entire people dreaming, girls, ladies, they dream about what we're doing. But the process sometimes, in my opinion, should be a little more on joy. Normally, magazines were made to create a trend and to propose ideas to a public. And magazines were made to vehicle and communicate ideas for the next season. And then someone said, well, the street is the soul. Is that's where the creativity. Yes, it's true. But from the street to the girl next door, who became tomorrow the model of everything. Unfortunately, that killed creativity. Most of the time, the job of a stylist is to make sure that you see a full lens, uh, that you see the dress, that blah, blah, blah. Because for them, there is consulting, for them, there is business, there is advertisers. So it's not like in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. It's not that. It's not like in 2000 anymore. Today, it's let's please the advertisers and then we have fun after if as far as you can get fun, which is not even sure you can, you know. Only the real masters like, like Steven Meisel, Steven Klein and uh, all these big photographers, they will crap because it's a beautiful crap image. They, won't, they will never give you a full lens because, because foreign advertisers, they are still photographers because they grow up with the films. So there's, there is still this emotion of spontaneity, of snapshots, of moments, of this fraction of a second where you got that shot. In purpose, I decide to fuck the hair a bit. Fuck what? I, in the sense, make it a bit dirty, working classic shapes from the 60s and 70s and destroy that shape using a serum, using an oil and make it a bit raw, a bit tough, a bit hard, a bit rock and roll. I propose Armin to make it pure, pure, pure German. German model, German designer, German makeup artist, German photographer in Germany for German magazine to make it pure made in Germany. And um, they come up with a great casting. And actually I was the only French in the team. <laughs> but I have to say it was feeling good to be a part of that German squad. The hair will be on the right place with the right shine and the right color it'll be. And to make sure it'll be right. I find us in France, unfortunately, it's not because I am, having the right balance of all these elements. I just got the feeling that what I like from my country in terms of hair is the history that we carry on for beauty, for aesthetic, for glamour, for seduction, for the famous je ne sais quoi, for the famous Paris touch and things. I mean, it's just the right amount to me. Perhaps because Paris is a bit of in, on the crossing of many way and perhaps, but we have a, such a long history of beauty, of cosmetic things since centuries and centuries, which it doesn't mean that we are the best or anything. I just got the feeling that since years and years and years, we have some kind of very good history of trying to be right with the dose. So to answer you what I'm thinking about German hairdresser, I think they are extremely, extremely competitive. They are extremely technique. They are strong in techniques. Perhaps sometimes missing a fraction of emotions. Perhaps they need to forget that the technique cannot always say everything. Thank you, Tash. It was a pleasure to be a part of the next story in March. Phil Danka.